Hello, I'm Ethan Johnson, and today I want to tell you about the time that I met John Hersey. Now, to set the stage a little bit, uh, it was 1985 when we moved from Willowbrook, Illinois to uh, Mount Prospect, Illinois. It was about a uh, three or so minutes away from where we uh, lived for many, many years. Um, and to that end, it was kind of traumatic in that, you know, here I am, this teenager, um, sophomore year of high school, at the school that I thought I was going to graduate from, uh, when uh, instead we up and moved to this whole different place uh, that I wasn't familiar with, to the school I never heard of, uh, with a name on it that I never heard of. Um, and I'd literally grown up in the shadow of Hinsdale South High School, and I really thought uh, that I would graduate one day from there, and, and that was not to be the case. Um, on the flip side, it did allow me to reinvent myself a bit and uh, pick and choose what stories I wish to tell people about my past, uh, whereas with the kids you grew up with, you can't get away with that kind of nonsense. <laughs> Still can't, really, I suppose. But... Uh, um, but yeah, it was uh, it was an adjustment, and uh, but uh, I, I made the best of it. In some ways, having the chance to have that opportunity to reinvent myself was a good thing, um, and I think it set me up uh, for later in life, uh, adapting to other situations. Um, but there we were at Hersey High School, and and. I was kind of, you know, not only having to adapt to a different school, but then also different parameters than what I was used to. As an example, at Hinsdale South, the required reading was The Good Earth by Pearl S. Buck, whereas at Hersey, it was Hiroshima by John Hersey. Well, because we moved in my mid-sophomore year, I was exempt from reading Hiroshima. Um, and so to that end, I didn't know who John Hersey was. I'd never read any of his stuff. I certainly wasn't forced to read it by way of required reading. And uh, one day there was going to be an assembly to meet John Hersey. Uh, or not so much meet, but you know, he was going to give a, a, a speech or you know, a lecture to the whole school. And it was mandatory. And I thought, great, I'll, uh, I'll ask him a question. And... Uh, and uh, be part of the Q&A after the, uh, the lecture part of it that I heard that was going to happen. And I was advised, uh, no, no, you'll not get that chance to do it. I'm like, well, come on, you know, it's all, they said it's mandatory, and then they said Q&A, and then my art teacher said, no, no, you won't get the chance to. <laughs> but I took a, a question, and I wrote it down and put it in my pocket and sat there and waited to ask. So John Hersey shows up, and I'm really not used to schools or buildings being named after people who are still alive. <laughs> um, you know, Marion Hills Elementary is where it began for me in Illinois, and that was just, there, I don't know, there was a such thing as Marion Hills, like, you know, a place, but that's what it was called. And then Eisenhower Junior High was named after Dwight D. Eisenhower, who's, you know, dead. And then Hinsdale South is regional. It was a township school district. So as an example, well, the rival school was Hinsdale Central. Um, whereas, the, you know, Hersey High, because I wasn't forced to read Hiroshima, I was like, you know, well, whatever. You know, and I knew nothing about the guy. And certainly I wouldn't have thought he was alive <laughs> because, you know, there's a building name. You don't name building after people still alive. <laughs> well, he, uh, sure enough, you know, he, was, he was very much alive and coming to the school to meet you know, to do this, this lecture. And what I did was I, I had my question ready, and, and when I got to the assembly, I found out that uh, the, the deck was stacked. And I found out how so, that the first two rows were all the honor students. And uh, they're all wearing suits, so all the boys are wearing suits, and all the girls are wearing fancy dresses like they're, you know, Sunday going to meet. And, uh, I, I knew not only was it stacked in that regard, that was all the honor students, which I certainly was not <laughs> one of them. But uh, one of my teachers that I didn't particularly care for, and we kind of had an antagonistic relationship uh, at that school. And I won't name names, I'll be nice, because I don't know if he's still teaching there, and, and it's kind of not particularly relevant. I don't want to smear the guy, but you know, also, and in, in fairness, he knows what he did. <laughs> 
And what he did was, he used to rant all the time about Reagan. Um, you know, this was back in the 80s. Uh, back when Reagan was, you know, still president. That was, there was a time that actually was a thing. <laughs> and he, uh, he would rant, you know, and I didn't particularly care for Reagan myself, but on the flip side, you know, you don't chuck the whole curriculum of your class out the window to rant about politics or any other topic, really, either. Um, so it's time to, you know, John Hersey uh, does the does the assembly, and he addresses the school, and he's uh, talking about, you know, stuff he has written in the past. I presume Hiroshima was part of it. And then I was talking about uh, works that he was in the process of either working on or had just completed working on. And I'll, I'll be not fair, I did not uh, look at what his, uh, I was going to say discography, <laughs> I did not look at his bibliography to see if he, in fact, had completed work on it. As an example, of Galapagos Islands. Uh, in his lifetime, of something that he did do or he was in the process of doing. But anyway, uh, you know, I'm sitting there and I'm, this is a guy I've never heard of. I was amazed he was alive, but other than that, I didn't have a whole lot of skin in the game, you know. Um, you know, like if an astronaut or something would have come to school, like Buzz Aldrin or something, I'd be like, you know, hey, this is a guy i heard of, you know, and the, the moon, hey, you know, but uh, uh, no, and so there's this author I never heard of, and, you know, what's he doing here? <laughs> And so this teacher's influence was felt heavily because every question when it was time for the Q&A was, what do you think about Reagan? What do you think about Nicaragua? What do you think about the Contras? What do you think about Reagan? What do you think about Nicaragua? What do you think about the Contras? And John Hersey himself was kind of like, you know, I'm not a political scientist. I'm not a pundit. I don't, I don't really have much to say about this. I'm busy. I'm doing other stuff. And they just kept asking it over and over and over, like variations on the same thing over and over. And he finally reached the point where he said, does anybody else have a question for me? Me. <laughs> My hand shot right up, and he called right on me. <laughs> to set the stage a little bit more, I came from a school that had a swimming pool. And I loved it. And uh, even the, you know, growing up, but uh, not being at the uh, Hinsdale South as a student, just growing up, I was able to use the pool. And... Uh, I was able to, uh, you know, uh, go to open swims and stuff like this. And uh, certainly as a student, uh, when I was a student there, then there was a, a swimming class or, or, or a segment during gym class. So as far as I was concerned, all good, love it. Um, and then I moved to a school that didn't have a pool. And what they did have was this iron rusting statue of a naked man, uh, life size, stepping out of what appears to be the monolith from 20, 2001 this arm outstretched and it's supposed to be man's quest for knowledge or some such baloney. And, uh, you know, I'm like, well, where's the swimming pool? You know, why, why would they do this? You know, why would they build, uh, spend the money on the statue? That was just stupid. You know, academia for you, right? <laughs> Especially high school. <laughs> and worse, it used to be in front of the school. And I was told by one of the teachers that during the Vietnam era, it used to get defaced a lot because it did have, you know, it wasn't just this rusting naked man, it was a naked man with genitalia, which apparently were defaced quite a bit. <laughs> and the school ended up moving into a back courtyard. And uh, it wasn't locked away where you couldn't possibly get to it, but they also did it in a way that's like, that wasn't convenient to anything. It wasn't, there was no real reason to go to the courtyard other than to behold the naked man statue that you could have just seen just through the window. There's no need to go any closer to it. So I go up in front of the entire school and there's John Hersey and I, I think he knows something's going to happen, he just doesn't know what. <laughs> and he uh, he stands there at the podium and I walk up to the microphone and it's right out of the movies, especially like those 80s John Hughes movies like Pretty in Pink and all this kind of, it would be something out of that. Where here's this lone microphone and some smarmy kid walks up to it in front of the entire class, the principal, the school administration, the honor students, everybody. And I went up to the microphone and I said, Mr. Hersey, what do you think about that statue in the courtyard? Don't you think they could have spent the money on something else? <laughs> so he took this big step back <laughs> and the whole school erupted laughing.
and applauding. And then I was everyone's hero for that moment. And anybody who had never heard of me before, they certainly knew me then. And John Hersey took a moment to compose himself. And when he pulled himself together and then let the applause and all the noise die down, he stepped up to the microphone and said simply, well, I didn't pose for it. <laughs> and that was the beginning and the end of my involvement with John Hersey in my life. Or as in the, in the, in the words of Spaceship Earth, or so I thought. So years later, I'm working at Panasonic and they have mandatory overtime for two weeks of the month and then two weeks of nothing to do which was just stupid on their part to do that that way but they did it and uh, they reached a point where there's just nothing to do and uh, I went to the bookstore <laughs> kids <laughs> ask your parents <laughs> um, and I went and got uh, I went to the classics section and I started reading books like Frankenstein and Frankenstein was one of those books where when I grew up with the whole like movie monster Lon Chaney uh, Bella Lugosi and all that kind of stuff all the black and white uh, movie icons that we think of nowadays um, yeah, that Frankenstein book was not at all like that. It was a much, much, much more interesting book and much more nuanced and very just, it was, uh, you know, I think uh, people just really give Mary Shelley the, the short end here, that they don't really give the book the respect that it deserves. And it's, it's very well done. And I highly, highly recommend it. Uh, and having read some other books, I, I went back to the bookstore one day and there's Hiroshima by John Hersey. I thought, you know, for the five bucks, why not? You know, I mean, I got nothing else to do. I got to sit, sit on the forklift and stare off into space. So I just as easily could read Hiroshima. And I'm in my 20s now. And, you know, as a kind of a sop to the old man, let, let me, I'll check that out. And I read it. I did read Hiroshima in my 20s. And uh, it was amazing. It was very, very well done. It was one of those books that uh, if it could be said that somebody was put on this earth to do something, I would certainly say that John Hersey was put here to write Hiroshima. And I can say now, as an older, wiser adult than that smarmy teenager that I was, that yes, you should read Hiroshima. If you do have the opportunity to read it, please do. Um, I won't go so far as to say it must be mandatory, you know, required reading, because I think that's a great way to put people off reading. I think uh, if you instill a love of reading people the way that I grew up reading, uh, then certainly, yeah, that, that's, that's a good thing. And, and uh, it makes you want to pick and choose more, like of your own choosing what to read, and then get, derive the enjoyment of the, or the uh, lessons from it. And with Hiroshima, it was so moving. It was just so well done. It was one of those, I just, I, I really, one, I, I felt like a jerk for, you know, cavalierly asking John Hersey about the statue. But, you know, I just, I, I just never knew. I never knew the power of what it was that he had written and what it was that he had done and contributed to the literary world. And I thought to myself, you know what? I, I, I need to write John Hersey a letter, <laughs> kids. Because <laughs> there was no email back then. It really, there was once a time, there was no such thing as email <laughs> the way as there is now. Um, and uh, there, there was no internet. Uh, in the way that there is now. And uh, I was like, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to write him a letter. I'm going to write a letter to John Hersey and let him know, uh, you know, that I did read his book and I'm that guy who asked the question about the statue. I don't know if you remember me, ha ha. Um, but I wanted to tell him. I wanted to tell him what the effect of the book was on me and, you know, how important I felt it was and what a great writer he was and all those things. And my hand to God, that morning I turned on the radio. John Hersey, dead. If there is any lesson at all that I can impart, it's certainly, uh, I, I, they say don't meet your heroes, but I certainly would say thank your heroes. Um, I really uh, regret not having the opportunity to tell John Hersey while he was alive the effect that the book had on, on me as an adult reading, reading Hiroshima. So if you do have the opportunity now to thank your heroes, whoever they may be, for whatever reason that may be that they are your heroes, please let them know now while you can. Don't regret it the way that I do and have done. 
And if you do have the opportunity to read Hiroshima, please read Hiroshima. It's an excellent book. And certainly uh, you'll understand, I hope, that when you do read it, you'll understand why I say he was put here to do it. Thank you for watching.